uh, I think it's really, in a sense, the wish of most architects when they begin to uh, deal with a whole range of, uh, of uh, territories to deal with objects, buildings, cities. But uh, it's very rare for, uh, for architects to really do all of those things. Invariably, they end up focusing on one particular kind of work. They become specialists. And that seems to be the thing that somehow marks their careers. Uh, it's uh, a uh, uh, fortunate situation, I think, that, that uh, Ron Arad is one of the exceptions to this, to this, uh, to this rule. And uh, since he left the AA, he's uh, been working in a variety <coughs> of uh, disciplines on a range of uh, projects of different scale, uh, focusing initially primarily on, the, on, on uh, furniture, objects, interiors. It's a kind of world that many of us maybe are familiar by analogy somehow with, with uh, the work of Aldo Rossi, whose, whose work is very, very different from, from that of uh, Ron Arad. But somehow Rossi also, uh, in many of his drawings, if you remember, painted this world where, in a sense, the coffee cup had the same status as some of his buildings. And I think in the work of uh, Ron Arad, this is also very much the case. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing uh, some of this work. As you know, Ron is a graduate of the AA and uh, set up uh, the company one-off in uh, the early 80s. And then later on, I think in, in 1989, uh, Ron Arad Associates, uh, which is in a sense a company that uh, has two or three different divisions doing uh, three, the last three, count. Three, three the last count, dealing with industrial design, architecture, and so on. And uh, tonight there's going to be a collaboration between Ron and Barnaby Gunning, who uh, deals with the architecture side of things in the office, and uh, will primarily involve questions from the audience as a way of beginning this discussion. Would you uh, welcome Ron Arad and Barnaby Gunning? The title of the lecture was absolutely dead serious, so what should we talk about tonight? Golden oldies. Golden oldies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Golden oldies. Golden oldies. What it's not so golden, these ones, but this one's golden. Yeah. This, is, yeah, this is the first piece of furniture that I've, I've ever done. This is when I walked out of some unnamed, or an architect whose name I won't mention in Hampstead, because you will find that it's very, very difficult to work for other, for other people, especially architects. Can you animate it, Barnaby? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's very difficult to work for other architects, and it's more difficult to work for other architects after lunch, I found. So one lunchtime, I didn't return. And I did this piece here, and other pieces to do with ready-mades not so much out of ideology, but out of necessity, survival. I mean, I had to limit myself to things I could do because London is not Milan, and no one is waiting for you with pieces of design. And at that stage, I can honestly say I had no idea I was going to become a designer. And it took me a few years to start saying in parties, what do you do? Well, I, I uh, studied architecture, but actually at the moment I'm, so, but I got over that. So that, that is a golden oldie. It's a, uh, I, for some reason, uh, the rover chair, uh, after being dormant for about two years, no one was interested in it, became a bestseller. Um, and I knew to, not to do one not to choose, not to say, I'll do a car seat on a frame. In a Dishonian way, it had to be a specific one. It was, I selected carefully and it, was, it happened to be the rover chair. And I knew I succeeded with this project when one day a couple walked out of the studio and the wife says to the husband, having bought two chairs, what I really like about this chair is that it reminds me a little bit of a car seat. <laughs> so. Um, I mean, we have another piece 
This piece is, again, an early one. It's called the Transformer, which we're going to relaunch now after, well, when it was new, I thought it's going to make us rich because it was an instant way of customizing a piece of furniture. Uh, you sat on a bag, very much like the sacco, the Italian sacco, but it was an airtight envelope. And you made your imprint on it, or you sat on it. You sucked the air out with the hoover. And it became as hard as, you know, when you buy vacuum-packed coffee, like a brick. Um, and then indeed, they sold very, I mean, what I thought at the time from a, my little studio in Covent Garden, which was another thing that happened, not by design, but by luck, because I looked for a place to work from. It happened to be Covent Garden, and then Covent Garden followed. Um, yeah, this is, I mean, Barnaby forces me to speak about it. You want me to speak about this now? Mm, no. OK, this is a staircase, the staircase of the second studio in Covent Garden. Um, and it was actually a keyboard connected to a synthesizer. As you walk down, it played random tunes. And the guy, the boffin that built the synthesizer, reassured me that it has the music power. I didn't know music was such a thing. Music power of four orchestras. But, uh, and we opened with a dancer performing on it, Gavi Agis, who went and did better things since. And again, like with the Rovers, lots of people wanted to buy the, the cassette we are playing. Okay, don't show them anything. Let them ask questions and hide the menu. <laughs> What, how was your day, Barnaby? What busy? What, working on an I didn't see, but I mean, we met Barnaby, went somewhere and he had his meetings and I had my meetings and where did you go? Somewhere anonymous in Docklands. Okay, this is, uh, we were asked to, de to do a, a, sky, a s skylight. I didn't ask for the light. If I mentioned the word light, but... <laughs> Right, a skylight over or in a, in a fake London square uh, covering a huge shopping mall. They realized that there's no light coming to the shopping mall and would we do something sculptural? Because some people see our architecture as sculpture. We don't. So um, as the, the square is walled by very, 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 very tall buildings, the tallest building you that you're ever likely to see in London, it doesn't get the sun anyway. So the light is artificial. All the, the light is, is, uh, is at, it's in the cavity of this blue uh, structure, uh, pouring into the, pretending to be daylight in the shopping mall. So how did the meeting go? Very well. Choose a color. Right. I can't give anything else away on that one. You have the color samples here. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, okay. so. I had a meeting. Ah, yeah, that's another, another. Try not, try not to recognize the buildings. Uh, not try not to recognize the end of the Jubilee Line by Foster. Yeah. Concentrate on the thing that moves in the middle of it, which is a competition for a sculpture we won, and it's a 60 meters uh, column needle that unlike everything in its surrounding is swaying in the wind. We used uh, uh, engineers that, um, marine engineers that normally spend all the time making sure masts don't sway in the wind. And uh, we just told them just reverse the principle. And uh, in the beginning we thought that the base of it was going to be one meter fifty, tapering to ten centimeters. But as it stands today, it's going to be just 40 centimeters when it's anchored to the ground. And the top, the red, the red bit is about eight meters. It's a sort of a linear pixel board. And as it, as it moves, it leaves text in the sky. They ask us questions like, uh, so how big do the foundations have to be? Right. And the engineer goes away, does the calculations, and comes back and says, you don't need foundations. It's too light. And then they ask us again, well, how big do the foundations have to be? So we have these circular arguments. What a nice way to spend the afternoon. <coughs> anyway, 
Okay, and, and there's some very happy news. We did get planning permission for it. We, so we are trusted by doing something with a footprint of 40 centimeters. <laughs> well, but if you want to talk about the house. This is, a, okay, this is a house we designed in, for a site in Courtney Avenue uh, off Kenwood. And the neighbors, when I say neighbors, we can see, the, we can see where the neighbors live. Don't like it. <coughs> <laughs> Show them. That, that, okay, this is this is this is our favorite neighbor. Is called John Seifert. You might know what you know. His father designed this little building here, Tottenham Court Road, and he was a modern man. His son lives here, and 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 uh, agitates his neighbors, and he warned them. He told them. The, the house doesn't even have a proper roof, and it doesn't have a door. And is anyway, we we lost. Uh, we would we, we gained the, the support of English heritage and 20th century society, and even the Telegraph. <laughs> and uh, and we would, if we went to an appeal, we would have uh, we we said to ourselves and to everyone that asked us, we would we would have won. But because they had a huge Seifert organized a huge party the day we lost the hearing in Haringey, um, our clients said that they don't want to live in this street anymore anyway. <laughs> so if anyone knows on a, of a site in, in the Camden side of Highgate, not Haringey, we're interested. Um, if you ask me questions about the house, I might answer. And if not, we can move on to something else. It has no proper roof. <laughs> uh, has, what is the house? Okay, it's the special. Yeah, I, I, yeah. He said to Barnaby in one conversation, "I live directly opposite. I will have to look at your house. You know that?" And Barnaby said, "Well, our clients will have to look at yours." <laughs> he was offended by that. And he was offended by that. Don't know why. Um, well, the house before, before well, the house is made of two shells that that Seifert called broken egg. But it, it's made of the the shell of the house is made of two parts that were going to be built in Venice in a in a in a place that built like big yachts and boats and things. Technically, they could have done it in two pieces. But for transport reasons, it would have had to be broken to smaller pieces. Uh, the shells would be the last thing to arrive on site. Before that, people might think it's, it's a minimalist house, a you know, concrete, uh, rectangular structure. Our clients in the first meeting said that they wanted a big, big living room. And we said, no living room at all. And indeed, we didn't do a living room. The whole plate. You can, can you, with the cursor, show them where it is? Yeah. yeah. I mean, th the living room is the, the bit we didn't touch at all. We did just a space that was uh, trapped between the plate that also covers half the swimming pool that you see. And there are stilts holding the box where the children from the current marriage live. And children from previous marriage live under the slab with a... <laughs> With the, uh, with the caretaker and with the swimming pool and the gym. And, and the master bedroom is the space between the shell and the box. And there's another, if you turn it around, we can see this study. And, and all the holes, we never fix holes. We don't put cling films because, you know, you can see lots of architecture with holes and then it's carefully fixed with, with glazing. We just recess the glazing from the holes. And uh, when it rains, it might rain on the tail of the Mercedes there. So it's like, it's a, it's a through, it's like an atri atrium that is between the shell of the building and the concrete. Um, unlike the rest of the streets, the, re the rest of the houses in Courtney Avenue, you can actually enjoy the garden, the woodlands, uh, without disturbing the privacy of the, of the people that live there, you can, you can actually, you are actually aware of it. 
unlike all the fortresses. Anyway, I won't do the planning thing again. We lost, they won, good for them. Uh, yes, I think the valet will do the car, finish the car, then do the house. It's just like a, it is a, made of a composite material, whatever that means to you. But um, what are you looking for? Looking for the living room. There you go. Oh, the living room, right? This is like an intern. Inter <coughs> this is the view from the house to the seafirts. <coughs> <laughs> and then, then to the garden, to the tennis court, to the swimming pool. I mean, the table is there just for scale, scale purposes. In short, oh, yeah. What you want to see? No, nothing. No? Sure. What do you want to see? What sort of? Is it bent the same way as your furniture is bent? <laughs> bent? <laughs> no, it's it's molded. I mean, there's <coughs> it's. What do you mean the shape? If the, if. Yeah. Does the shape have anything to do with, with the furniture? I think so. I think it's uh, it's the same. It comes from the same source. Uh, having said that, not all the furniture are bent. Some are very angular. Can we think of an angular piece of furniture? Yeah, a box sure. in four <laughs> movement, for example. That's definitely there. Um, it's, uh, if you, maybe it's in the catalog. Oh, oh sure, in the catalog. The top. Yeah. Yeah, <coughs> Uh, you passed it, but never mind. I mean, some some are very angular, some are bent. The thing about doing curved things, it's more we know we all know that it is cheaper not to. It's 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 easier to draw. Uh, for Tel Aviv Opera House, in, we had to the wall of the uh, the island. Tel Aviv Opera House. Is it coming? It's coming. I'm trying to choose my words carefully, not to mention things that will make Barnaby show you things. But I did say Tel Aviv Opera House, so he's, he's going to show. Um, for, for this, for the white thing here, you can see the box office, but you can see the... Um, no, maybe not the drawing, maybe show the... Just press the... the yeah. I mean, the wall not only is it's not straight in any direction, not in plan, not in elevation, not in section, also changes thickness, in, you know, in the journey, which, mean, which means to do something that a minimalist architect would do in four sections, we had to do 400 sections. And this is before computers, so it was it's a bit of martyrdom, you know, being suckers for some reason. I think there is, a sim there is a connection because we try to run an office where there's no real boundaries between one activity uh, to another. So even, sorry? Tom Vak. Tom Vak. Mm. What is it? Well, if someone asks us to do a sculpture for, for the center of Milan, um, well, this is how it, how it starts, we, we saw, this is Domus, Domus magazine asked us to do a totem. And we told them that we'll do a real, very, very, very realistic sculpture of 100 chairs stacked up to 10 meters, which gave us, the budget of the totem gave us uh, the budget to, to develop a new chair. So. Um, this is a trick we've done before in the Cartier Foundation, I'll come to it. But uh, this is the first image of the, of the totem before the chair ever existed. I like showing this one, the hand drawing next to the, the, the one that says geometry, yeah, talking about geometry, because yeah. it's, people often, often ask about the, how does the computer affect the work. I mean, the sketches are still necessary and the computer makes the end result more like the sketch than if you had to do it in any other way. So the beauty of this the drawing on the right is that the same the same drawing is used to to 
provide us with a photographic image of what we are designing, but the very same drawing is sent by the telephone to the company that makes the mold and is used to cut the mold. That's why there's the, the similarity is no surprise. The process is absolutely upside down now. The first stage of any project is a photograph. Then you have to go and build it. And that forces you to do, you know, you get the gratification in the very beginning of the project. Like, uh, it's, it's very addic addictive to, to have an idea in the morning and in the evening to see a photograph of it. And then you have to have a really good reason to, to go ahead through the very painful process of producing it. And when it comes, it has to be, it better be good, otherwise it was a waste of time because the photograph, I mean, we can flood the magazines with photographs of things that don't exist. And indeed, to the last, sorry? Mine is a technical hitch. What technical hitch? We crushed. Yeah, we have a freeze. Very good. Okay, yeah. So it's shutting down. Commercial break. <laughs> Like, <coughs> so what he doesn't want to know? Mm -hmm. Sorry? Stuck. <laughs> okay, I mean, for, uh, for the last. I'm worried. <laughs> You're worried. I'm worried. Okay, uh, shall we fix another date then? <laughs> <laughs> For the last uh, uh, show in Milan, we we worked in a in a new process. We discovered that when you vacuum form pieces like this, this is vacuum form aluminium. Sometimes in the factory, they to avoid wrinkles, they blow the piece of aluminium. Are we on? We're going to be back. Mm -hmm. They blow the aluminium first before they, before they suck it to the mold. And I was very interested in, in this process in between, the preparation for, for vacuum forming. And I asked them what happens if we just blow it, not through the normal rectangular frames that you use, but through freeform shapes, and what do we get? And uh, we experimented in plastic, in, in a plastic vacuum forming machine, and it's exactly the same, you know, blow, so we made templates. The templates were made in an inch thick steel, reinforced um, by walls, again, inch thick, 50 centimeters high, and and a lot of uh, a lot of temperature, like 500 degrees, and a lot of air pressure. Are we coming back? Yep. And we we've blown shapes, not really knowing what to do with them, or not not really being so interested. What are they going to be? The shapes. What's um, so? Yeah. Oops. Yeah. But we had all these things happen too near in the date to the Milan exhibition. So we did a whole series of photographic images before we were even uh, convinced that we can come up with something. So, we, so the press was full, is full of images like that, and it was all wishful thinking. But um, can you show them the, the one, the green one, that look at this Elliot thing? Is that some Yeah. I think so. Oh, it's in the terrible book. Uh, it's, yeah, it's not. It's not on the other way. It's not on this one. No, it's not. Anyway, let's let's show the photographs that followed it, and and this illustrates well. Can you, can you show this against the? Uh, yeah, against the other one. Against the one that we did before we've even seen one. Okay. Uh, Anyway, it's, it's always, 
it's always good to find that reality is a little better than than our images, at least we think so. So what we did here is three templates, and out of these three templates, we cut and turned them so we can have like A and B sides and weld them together and polish them and sometimes use the whole plate. And we call them the big things. There are vases, if anyone has flowers this big. but. Uh, I mean, they're called vases to avoid the question about function and is it a functional object or is it not or what is it or is it a sculpture? Um, it doesn't really matter. I mean, what mattered to us then is a process and, and forcing materials to do things that no one forced them to do before. Um, this is a company in Worcester that that makes parts of airplanes. Um, you can actually spit it out. I mean, it, you know, you just put it in the oven and and blow air on it, and that's what you get. <coughs> Any questions? <laughs> you want things to be stiff or to be fine. Say it again. The other stiff mode? Flexi. Um, I like things to be stiff if they have to be stiff and to be <laughs> soft if they it's not, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no hard answer to this. <laughs> but, um, I mean, some, okay, some things we can go to, let me, <laughs> I mean, some, sometimes, uh, we can go to, to the, the Alessi, the mm. smallest thing we've ever done. Well, actually, before this morning, we show a very flexible thing. Which version? The, the soundtrack. The soundtrack. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is a very flexible thing. It looks big here, but it actually fits in a CD case. And it's very, very flexible, and, uh, but it's self adhesive. So you have to, to look for something really, really hard, like the floor, the table, the television, the computer, and stick it on, and it and it stores 85 CDs, and you can browse through them. And um, when we did this one, the question that everyone asked is, what can it work vertically? And we d we could have modified it and made it vertical, but instead we did another thing, which is a very stiff piece of aluminium extrusion just like this but this is very small and <laughs> come on show them what he does <laughs> and you buy it like you buy pasta like and then you just make a chain of them <coughs> and so, I mean, the flexibility is in making it segmented. You can press, ah, uh, no, okay. No, no, nothing. Um. <coughs> Moisan, your people don't ask questions, so we won't give them any answers. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> um, it is 10 pounds. No, 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 no. 10 pounds for 82 CDs, you know, 10 pounds. Uh, everywhere that sells Alessi stuff. I, with some difficulties in England. Sorry? Can you speak up? Uh, which of uh, um, um, well, the the true answer is that now the previous work is the biggest influence on on the current work or on the future. I mean, it's like the work yes, is somehow in its own orbit. Uh, I think in I mean, I like lots of people's work, and I like 
everything and I couldn't, I couldn't point out like ah, Prouvé was a great influence or, or Castiglioni was or I mean I can say that Pesce was a great influence although I can't stand most of the things he does now so it would be misleading if I said uh, although he's, he was brilliant and he's still brilliant and and it's not I mean like a street sign can be a great influence and and I don't know. What's your greatest influence? Oh, beautiful. Right. <laughs> That's the right. Jesus. Well, bad influence. <laughs> you said you were going to talk about the Cartier project. The car well, the, uh, the Cartier project again. It's a, it's a way. It's a, an installation. To still the inaugurational. Uh, exhibition in the Cartier Foundation by Jean Nouvel. And again, the only way to finance the installation I wanted to do there is to make sure that all the components can be sold after the exhibition. So in this case, there are tables. But I wasn't interested in tables as such when I did the exhibition. Although after that, I mean, this, this became like a type of table. And you can show them Belgo. Yeah. Oh, we can run, let, let this film run, it's quite. Um, Jean talks about uh, virtuality, about <laughs> transparency, reflection, but it's all very well when, it, when we talk about vertical walls, but what you do with the ceiling, what you do with the horizontal plane. I mean, people don't have many bright ideas about it. Um, okay. Belgo North. I copied the tables later when I did Belgo North, so, and it starts making sense because the way you use them could be for one big party or for two small parties. That the, the, the hips between the two lumps reassure people that they have some privacy and they're not actually sharing the table with the other horrible group next to them. Uh, yes, yeah. yes. You don't get tired of it? No, when I get tired, I use it because they're so. In, uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I have, I, st I try, but it's look. Sometimes I tr the misfits. Do you have the misfits? Yeah. I try this at home, and it's not very good. <laughs> I mean, it's like. I mean, of course, I know who to blame. They didn't make it. It's not. It's. It's. They, it wasn't made. I mean, it wasn't made as comfortable as it could have been made. And the reason I have it, I, I have it at home, is because some clients rejected it because it wasn't comfortable enough. And I thought I'll have it because I like the way it looks. But and I could live with it, but I couldn't live with the comments of people. I, di I didn't want every time I had people to discuss the comfort of it or the lack of comfort in this case. So I, uh, I, we have it in the office now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have this, the red, I mean, are they running away from you? Let me find it. It's, yeah, I have this at home now. And I can tell you exactly all the problems about it, but I don't think you want to know. Um, it is, t t again, it's, it, t in my defense, I'll say that there are prototypes, both the misfits and the soft softs. I mean, the idea here is that you have modular pieces that you can join by the, by the feet. But it could be a lot better. Some things I'm very happy with. And I wrote back to the company and said, thank you, and it's, it's very good. Uh, what's the problem you living? Sorry? My home in the computer? Uh, no. Uh, we haven't done a computer model of my home yet. <laughs> but this is a home we just finished um, two weeks ago in Fulham. Um, it's a 200 square meters box. And our client was uh, led to believe that he can have a mezzanine there for two floors, which he could just. I mean, if he likes touching his, you know, the ceiling with his. 
So we came up with a solution that it's not quite a full flow, but it's like a, more like a convertible car. You get part privacy there, and it's, uh, well, it's this project here. And, and it's now in the nasty stage where he moved in, but not everything is ready. But, and he calls us a lot. I like working with people that are very good in what they do, and I, I, the office employs architects and industrial designers, and it's very, I mean, it's very difficult to know who's doing what. Like, say, when the Adidas project is a good example, they all work together to the same, on the same projects, each one doing what they're best at. This is another competition we won in Paris for the headquarters of Adidas. And uh, unfortunately, Adidas dis decided that it would be better value for money to buy Marseille Football Club than to build this building. So it's another unbuilt project. Another. Um, so let's. I mean, can you show? Can you flick through the images there? It has a, a drum play entrance. The, they named this, uh, the project was called Adidas Stadium for some reason. And uh, what we did is a drum play stadium. There's like a wedge shape in the entrance with reflective surfaces. So the underbelly of the interactive cinema above it appears to be the underbelly of the stadium. It gives you like a circle. The reflection you see in there is the reflection of Champs-Élysées. The travelator that takes you through the video cylinder there, which is just a slightly curved wall, uh, gives you a trendum, a set of sporty legs, so you can walk in and see yourself in a mirror with Muhammad Ali's legs. Yeah. And inside there's a set of ramps playing cat's cradles with the, the transparent lift shafts, and the cars of the lift carry the interactive signage. So the lifts tell you what happens, the walls of the lift, what happens every level. Behind this, there's the world's biggest scoreboard transmitting real-time goals from Tokyo and Kuala Lumpur. And this is an example how this is the, uh, there's the, the sports cafe at the top of it. So when the project happened, you know, the ch these chairs were designed for it by industrial designers, the table, the uh, angle poise <coughs> video, Things or we can go. What you're going to the sports cafe? I was going to, FPE, to what? FPE. FP, yeah. Mm -hmm. And working on this architectural project, developing the chair for it, and then we de we develop this chair, which is um, in a way a totally it's a totally new way of making chairs because it's uh, the membrane. Is flex is is flexible and flat, and you just extrude it to the two <coughs> extruded aluminium double barrel tubes, and then in one heat it becomes a chair that needs no fixing. You can show the yeah, you can, you can show the flexibility of it here. This um, so it, the chair is very flexible. I mean, it's very very supple until you sit on it when all four feet hit the floor. Even I can sit on it without any fear. Eventually. Sorry? Eventually <laughs> when I stop. So we got two things out of this um, out of this unbuilt building. One is the chairs and the furniture that comes with it. The other is not so good, which is a chain of sports cafes in, in France. Do you want to show the... Uh, mm -hmm. Which was no consolation prize, because it's a, it's a job we don't like at all. But we accepted to do it while there was still hope that the main building will be built. Um, do you have real photos or just computer images? Uh, we just have computer images. 
Right, okay. The the main idea of I mean the whole idea of sports cafes is 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 eating hamburgers, drinking beer and watching football. And I don't understand it. Sorry? It's uh, it's empty because at that stage we didn't have computer people in the program, but now we do so. It says full now. So we have so the main idea here is to have the main the conduit. It's a carbon fiber tube here, this that squashes itself. <coughs> Every one meter eighty. There are two two tables I can't leave ring out. And we have back to back screens. So it acts like a like a partition between the two sides of the tables and, and people can enjoy the hamburger with the football. Um, and unfortunately we have to do several, several of them. And this is like, it, it's a nightmare that every, new, every time we employ someone is guaranteed to work on it. Like. But they have very nice chairs <laughs> and stools. The totem gave birth to, to a, a vitra chair. I, it's not in aluminum, it's in plastic. Vitra is in V. Not this? No, 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 no. Well, which is, it's, it's like mini totems. And, and we were asked to do, to do a table to go with this chair. And I think, yeah, we don't, uh, do you have the several tables together? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, the clue, I mean, what, I mean, tables, it's very difficult to make interesting because, you know, they're this height and they have to be flat. And uh, no, there's, 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 there's another one, yeah. <coughs> Anyway, the idea of this table, actually, if you go to the to the first one, to the to Tom, uh, no, th 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 this, yeah. Okay. The idea of this table is that the waves that that are in the chair they perform. Uh, they are there for structural reasons to give it stiffness. The waves in the table make it join each other. If you if you go to this one and. and yeah, please. Yeah, so it's it's it has a peak in the middle, and then it fades out to a straight vertical line. So you can you can join them lengthwise, widthwise. And the skeleton, this the structure is trapped in the plastic. And you can use the same the same top with a with a central <coughs> leg or with four legs, it has sockets for both. Since you've asked. When you design a house, do you also try to get your clients to use your furniture on the side so that it's like a football? Um, <coughs> I mean, the people need normally in a house more than, more things than <coughs> we have designed, and sometimes our design is not the most suitable. Um, in the Fulham, in the loft, it's the first time that we agreed to take the role of interior designers, and we got involved in buying furniture for from other companies. Um, it's very difficult, and it's not it's not something we enjoy doing at all. Apart from you know having someone else checkbook and and do fantasy shopping, that's quite nice, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> as much as possible, as much as we think, I mean, we don't want, we, we have our clients' best interests, you know, but, uh, but normally they come to us because apart from one, you know, there's one, we had one set of clients that on Harvestock Hill that came to us because we were the nearest on the yellow pages. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, but, but, uh, <laughs> They missed you. I think you're near, Moisan. <laughs> but it is just uh, anyway. So normally people come to us because they like what we do, 
and they know more about our furniture than, a, than about our architecture. So they expect to have a piece. Of, this is, uh, <laughs> thank you, Barnaby. <laughs> This is. Do you have Do you have the the previous versions of this yeah. or not? You the do. The earlier one. I yeah. So, yeah. No, no, you don't. Ah, this is a this is a collectors collectors of ours that having a house built by Alice and Morrison. Uh, maybe I should. Anyway, they have, and they asked us to do the fireplaces. And sorry, and uh, and they have central heating. They don't really need fireplaces, and. I, the first, the first thing I said. <laughs> you got the name up there. Sorry. Ah, <laughs> oh, we have the name. Ignore the name. Uh, it's a different Blackburn. <laughs> um, found oh, found the first idea was to give them virtual fireplaces. You know, play with with <laughs> pixel boards that will say um, warm, nice, cozy, or wonderful. <laughs> and and they, they, that was like the first, the first step, and they went for it. Then they went to the house and came back after a weekend and said, we want, can one of them be like that and the other? It's in two rooms adjacent to each other. And can the other one be something else with real fire? And, and I said, no, I mean, the two are seen together. So if I change one, we change both of them. And then I thought, well, take them further in the journey. Ah, you found some, some, some old, some old yeah. So that the next step, the next experiment was in, in having nothing at all there. No fire, no virtual fire, nothing. Just reflection of themselves and the world. So that it's also when we started, you know, we, we are quite, quite comfortable with the blowing technique. So we made two, fire, two fireplaces that are exactly the same. One is an innie, it goes into the wall like this, and one is an outie, like this. And we just wondered, how long is it going to take them to say that, doesn't it look like the anatomy of a woman? And uh, they did, finally. And the answer was, well, wasn't it clear from the beginning? Because it, but it wasn't. The material of the future. Yeah. Hang on. Uh, what's in there? No, can't read it very well. Ceramics. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Huh? But actually, it's true. <laughs> what's the material of the past? I, I'm, are you very interested in the future? You've Sorry. sorted out the present. Present is fine. Future is the future is no problem at all. It's any other questions about the present or? Could you talk about your design? Sorry. <laughs> I was going to ask you about your design process. How do you use computers, which are wonderful images, but where in the design process do you use these, and uh, how do you use physical models? Like well, the process is by talking. Talk, uh, we, we like talking a lot about things. Then we like drawing things, and uh, then we we just go, you know, just model things. We use the computers like before we used blue foam, um, but uh, is this a long enough answer, or you want a longer one? Right. At the, well, um, we have we, we we have a pretty good intuition about things, and we know we design things that we know can can stand, and it's not a problem. It's like I mean, it's it's not a problem. I mean, to to make things work, or to make pieces of furniture comfortable, or to. Um, but also, I mean, we just give computer data to consultants who can help us with it. So. 
Yeah, we work a lot with con consultants, like with with the mass. You know, we just they anticipate exactly the the uh, the resonance, and we know exactly how it's going to bend with what sort of wind. Um, What to know exactly? Uh, some of the fun, yeah, but not all the fun. Uh, <laughs> 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 not more. Um, like, but sometimes, sometimes we throw ourselves, uh, we throw ourselves into the into the deep end, like uh, big time. I think in Tel Aviv Opera House, we didn't know anything about how to go about building the, the free-form shape. We had to pretend throughout the process that, yes, we do. What's the problem? You just stick a cone here in the shattering, and then when the concrete sets, you just chop it off, and what's the problem? Uh, and that's, that's the way it worked. But we did a reluctant, we won another reluctant competition to design <laughs> the first exhibition of Glasgow 99, Capital of Architecture and Design. In the world. And it's called Winning, the Design of Sport. And we really did not want to win. And we made balls of it. <laughs> and we, we just, we, we just uh, thought, OK, it's the McClellan Gallery. It's just like a classic building. We have no interest in cladding the building or camouflaging it. Or so all the exhibits will be in balls. So we did this image. And unfortunately, we won the exhibition. That we won the competition, and now we have, it's very, very difficult, but we have to come up with the balls, and we have to, and within budget and all that. But we get, we get there, and we didn't, we had, we didn't have a clue, you know, how to do it. We know a lot about balls now. <laughs> They're round. Every point is equidistance to the center. No, we know how to make it now, but, uh, I wish we were graphic designers like Mariscal. I mean, he just finished his graphics. And we're still struggling with balls. <laughs> and we notice the time is running out. We have 10 weeks. And we. We like this image, though. We just. Uh, I like the one, the aerial view of the gallery. Like, it looks like a the boiler room of some. Why didn't you want to win? Because we were busy, and because they don't pay a lot of money, and because we know we're going to lose money doing this exhibition. Oh, because they had a small budget. They had a small budget and big ambitions, and because, yeah, I mean, it's it's a. Uh, of course, we liked winning, but we thought we'll win and we say no thank you <laughs> so we said okay shouldn't have tried so hard we didn't try hard that, that's the thing because we showed them one image one yeah one, one movie one. one movie and to, it's the easiest thing is one well, well the easiest thing to model is a ball on a computer so it's just <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, no one's asking. We have a lot of things we have to design next, and I'd, I'd like it this way. I mean, with with the with the industrial design, we initiate most of the things. No one comes to us and said, "Do you want to design the CD rack for us?" No, it comes from us. So, and nothing stops us from doing whatever we want in industrial design. I mean, we have a company for each activity we have. If it's plastic, it's cartel. If it's small things, it's Alessi. If it's furniture, it's Vitra. If it's upholstered, it's Casina. If it's, so we just, uh, so we're fine in that area and we're doing exactly what we want. Um, no one asks us to do a palindromic teapot. I mean, just to just uh, an idea we had and, and Alessi makes it. So it, it's uh, in architecture, it's difficult because you have to be commissioned. And the whole process of commissioning architect 
as you might have gathered by now, is very flawed. It's not, you know, some who judges competitions, who sets them up. Uh, I mean, we have the major the Tate Gallery to the taste of of, the, of Nick Sirota, for example. I wouldn't choose him to be the judge. And it's it's difficult. We have to live with it. It's, that's life. And even when you have clients that want your building, there's a silly planner or conservationist in Haringey that wants to protect uh, an insignificant house that was built a few years ago because it's old. So, I mean, like, oh, you are invited to some competitions as a tonic, like the Science Museum. I mean, we are convinced this was the best scheme, but other people didn't think so. And they work with the one they worked with before. But it's OK. The, the idea here, if you're interested in this, it's like there's a the making of the modern world. It's a gallery in the Science Museum that finds itself en route to the new welcome wing. So you have to, you had to provide an access, a, an easy access to the new wing. But it, it is a gallery. We wanted people to use it as a gallery. So we did a super highway there. And all the exhibits <coughs> were on the two sides of it, on turntables. I mean, can we see anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah OK. Yeah. I mean, we have just some of the movie, yeah? yeah. And we did, we showed them, we showed them a video of this uh, and some details. And they asked us, where are the plans? Where are the sections? And we sent the courier in the middle of the presentation to, to get the plans in. Anyway. Anything else you want to talk about? I think they had enough, Barnaby. Yeah. Do you have enough? Sorry, Gautier. Gautier is a, do you remember the, in the beginning we showed the golden, oh, I showed them this, I like this footage. This one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the RTW, it's called Reinventing the Wheel. Again, something that no one asked us to do. Um, it's a set of shelves that you can wheel from one room to the other, and they maintain the horizontality and to get to the books or to whatever you just I have one at home and it's great by the way answering your question the ceiling fell off one day and I had to move the whole library to another room it was <laughs> just like this what do you do when you get bored take your shelf. So, sorry when you get bored I take drugs <laughs> what, the, what I mean? Sorry? What you do, Mr. Stroke? Sorry? Sorry? I didn't, I don't get the question. Maybe you want to rephrase it. How did you design this presentation? This? Yeah. Uh, out of laziness. She, I, I'm not. I, Damn it, if I was going to do a lecture, to write a lecture, I want to talk about, it's just, it just doesn't suit uh, temperament and we don't have time to do it. This is here. This is like, there's a lot of things that we forgot to, to put on the hard disk of this portable. But, um, I called today, Barnaby. Uh -huh. yeah. This is a shop that's on site in Milan. And again, to, not to be so bored, we decided to that the balustrade is going to be just one strip of tempered steel going up and down and up and down and going and the whole shop is just a series of lending and steps and lending and steps once upon a time, it was like once upon, we designed the shop that yeah it's exactly our client got bored with this and he didn't have enough drugs so he's decided to excavate and now to do another level under it. So it's the same, it's, it's, uh, it's nice to do the same site twice. The Gautier shop. The Gautier shop is, uh, oh, you showed it to him. 
Briefly. Briefly, we have one image. This is using the, the plastic chair, the plastic uh, suck ups. And this is all, this is Caroline and Simon, all the people that worked with me, you know, using this technique. And the wall was cast on the floor and then hung back on a on, on the wall. It's that the whole shop was a bit like a shop window. It was a very narrow shop in South Molton Street. And it's the same time in those days. Do we have the concrete stereo? Yeah, sure. I was playing with casting things in concrete. And we went to do a photographic shoot in Dungeness. And we, we just dragged one of the figures. It, it, and it's still there. I mean, someone Someone saw it as recent as two weeks. As recent as two weeks. Yeah, this is like one of the early pieces that I did when I defected from this architect's office. I hope his name is not on the menu there. I think the lecture is finished. Any questions? What the? <laughs> um, I don't. I mean, it changes. Sometimes you go. There is Vitra has, has a traveling exhibition of mine, and they they it tours Poland and Czechoslovakia, and they're very good. Vitra is very good on the Eastern Bloc, and sometimes they drag me to the opening, and it's nice because I discover things that I thought I liked and I don't, or things that I didn't know I liked and I do. Um, I think the chair I did for Vitra is still sort of one of my favorites, the, the well temperature. Can we find um, it? Yes. Sir. Because it is, you can show the Vitra movie of it. Yeah. it this was when I didn't know who Vitra was. They started the Vitra, they knew who I was for some reason. And they ca they wanted to do the Vitra editions, which which is outside their productions, and to do a series of furniture that has not no commercial constraints whatsoever. And instead of doing, um, instead of using the the strength of Vitra with all the fifteen hundred people working for them and and machinery and technology, all I could think of is things I could do myself. And, and indeed, I did the prototype myself. This is the, my first ever commission. And I still like it because it's such an easy portrait of a club chair. I mean, almost like a Matisse drawing of a face. And, you can, and it captures all the. And, and then sitting on it, I knew it was going to be reasonably comfortable. But it's a different sensation. It's like sitting on steel, but on, on a waterbed. And it's. But it, I don't know if I'm. The, it's, I don't know if it's, that's the piece I'm most proud of. There's one piece that keeps us alive in the office. It's the bookworm. Do we have it? Yeah. There's one one piece of furniture that has a turnover. I mean, the royalties that we get, which is three percent of the sales, is bigger than everything else we earn in the office. And I'm very proud of it. We don't have to work. We just get royalties. It is. But we waste it on Glasgow and on. Yeah, this piece in plastic, which is, it pays our wages still. <coughs> and it's derived from this in a very funny way. We did, do we have the loop? I'm looking for the loop. I don't, I don't think you have it here. You have it? Yeah, you do. You have everything. It all starts, sorry? It's in the picture. Yeah. Okay, it all started with a, a workshop I did at Vitra, and they asked me to do a workshop with students, and I had no idea what I'm going to do. I said to them, "Get me, get me a s coils of tempered steel, one and a half millimeter thick, whatever the widest you can get it." And when I arrived, they had like seven coils, threatening coils, and I had to start doing things with them. The first thing I did is I made a loop and played with it. 
and just to see it, you know, just to think, you know, what can we do with it? <laughs> and, and then I did some, do you have the, the, the photograph from? There's a, which one? This one I think Out, outside the virtual design is yeah. uh, yeah, shown virtual. Uh, no, it's not that one. There's a different one. From yeah, there's a different one. Okay. So after three weeks, I made some furniture out of it, this. And here was like a, a transition between the natural form of the sprung steel and the controlled form of the double skin of the box sections, if you want. And that fueled me for a while. And after that, the bookworm, out of the same material. And now it pays my rent. So it, so maybe, maybe if you ask, this is the piece I'm the most proud of, the loop. Very proud of you, Loop. <laughs> so. For the, um, the plastic uh, bookworm. Yeah. Um, I know it's steel before, but now it's plastic. Can you can uh, buy and make that shape, or just find where you get it? Buy when one, you try buy it. it. You actually make your. You buy a coil. You buy oh, so you buy a coil, and you d you. Get an architect to design it for you. People, people always want to know how they can get the shape that they saw in the photograph in the yeah. magazine. Can we do a drawing? Well, it's, it's, you know, for the first time I can walk even in London and can see through windows, right? and which is kind of funny. Have you designed any wheelchair? Any? Wheelchair. Wheelchair? Wheelchair, no. Yeah, I did. You did one. Yeah. Is it good? <laughs> I think no, but I think I mean no. Maybe, 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 maybe you want to bring to the discussion the fact that is most of the things we do. Oh, thank you, Barnaby. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is this is this is this is called Lloyd Loom, and it's shoes for chairs. So the, the idea is that when you get up, the chair gets up with you, and. Um, and but if, but there is, yeah, I mean, there is like, there are, there's a, a whole breed of designers that devote their lives to things that are more useful and more commendable than the things that we do. If that is what you're saying, I agree with you. And doctors are even better than architects and designers. And politicians are the best. With? Yeah, the opening of, uh, of uh, you know, Gabi Agis, we, we, she did a piece for the staircase. That's, I know that you think about the loop, you know, it could be, could be great on stage. I can, I can see that. So do you have any advice for uh, newcoming architects and designers? Uh, <laughs> what should we tell them? <laughs> yeah, I mean, just, um, just, yeah, I mean, <laughs> don't, don't, don't work for anyone to, for too long or, or at all. And don't try to join any trend or any movement, you know, don't try to join anything. Because by the, <laughs> by the time you do, it's too late and it's boring and it's like, Imagine being a postmodern architect now. Oh, imagine, imagine, I mean, just. Sorry? The Alessi projects we have here is the soundtrack and the, the teapot. That's what we have here. Last week, Alessi came to the office with a bag full of uh, miniatures of the aluminum blown things, he wants to do them small. They look like vitro miniatures. And um, so I can show you them and just reduce the scale and you see the new Alessi thing. But we actually didn't agree with him that easily. We, want, we don't want him to, to take them as ready-mades. It's for, you know, it's, you know oh, can you make it even smaller? Yeah, sure. Okay. Well, this is the smallest. This is, can you make it even bigger? Make it so it, you see pixels. Yeah, yeah that's a lessee. Yeah. 
Yeah. Show us, show the show. Yeah, and that's ours. Yeah. Anything? Door handles? Do, door, do you want to see a door handle? No, they don't want to see them. Yeah? yeah? Sure. <laughs> uh, is that one? Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is a door handle. Yeah. <laughs> um, but maybe the tinker chair is like yeah, a I think it's nice. tinker chair is a good thing. It's one of when, uh, when you were doing the house in Amsterdam, mm -hmm. okay, that's something that's completely from you. But the pull up project is that also all brand new or is that uh, renovation? No, it's we had a box, of just an empty shell with nothing. Yeah. Only uh, just just a Terrific. terrible staircase leading to it. The Piper's building, do you know the it? It's a well, I mean, uh, you asked a few, there's two questions there, how to work in, well, it's very easy to work if the place is finished, if like we're doing like a project in Soho now, in a shell that was just finished for the developer or the speculator to sell to people, and it's really obviously very, very bad. We have to... We have to live with it and work with it. But that's a lot easier than Tel Aviv Opera House, that we worked alongside an architect that was building the whole complex. And we had to, are you showing Tel Aviv? Or? Yeah. We had to, to build with him. And it's a lot easier to, to demolish a wall than it is to, to erase a wall from other, another architect's drawing. Or we can. Chipperfield asked us recently to cheer up one of his competition entries <laughs> with uh, and, and he asked us to do the loft of this building there well show, show the building first and I can yeah and the top the glazed top there uh, is was the play loft for the owner of Samsung electronics and can we do something there and this is what we did, that, that little animation there. We did spaces that move within it, like double, double, double height. It's a double height space. One of them is... <laughs> it's nice. Yeah, and one of them is, is stationary, and it also punctures through the roof to go to the, to the golf range. Um, the yellow thing doesn't move anywhere. It stays there. No, and or the one on the top left in the square, this one. And David could not stand the fact that, can we go show the building again? Yeah. Right. He couldn't <laughs> stand the fact that something penetrates his immaculate, perfect uh, box. And we had big discussions that, you know, it was all done in a short time at the model makers and I, I went to, I said to him, look, don't David, it's, it stays there and it makes sense. And I said, okay, okay. And then I went to Vienna and then I get a phone call from my nine year old daughter. And she said, the model maker told me that the other architect is a very bad man. <laughs> he chopped, he chopped the top of the model. <laughs> and, and the, uh, and in the end, in the end, Terry Farrell won. So <laughs> <laughs> it gets better. Yeah. But he fell out with the people of Samsung. And they started talking to Jean Nouvel, who is a friend of ours. And he said, do you want to do something in the bill? <laughs> so, so we'll start at the top this time. <laughs> Sorry? Can we see the, your design of Michael Jackson? 
Do we have it here? No, it's not. It's not. It's called Michael Jackson, but it's not. No. So Maybe Michael Jackson. It's, this is before Michael Jackson came out. <laughs> no, we did. It's not here? It's not here. No, we did, we did a piece, we can't, well, I won't describe, we did a piece for, for him commissioned by CBS and it's to do with looking in a mirror and all you can see is an eye because it's like a complicated story. But a few years later he, he used our furniture in a video of his without asking permission. He did buy them, admittedly, but not to be used in a video and uh, we sued him, or Sonny, and they settled out of court, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking for? Anything unusual? Okay, no, nothing, everything else is usual. Mm, that's right. Yeah. Hey, let's, let's, that's right. let's go and have dinner or something. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thanks. So this. 